Hey everybody, it's Chainsaw Reacts back once again with another reaction for you guys. Today, guys, of course, we're here continuing the journey of Ben 10, checking out the next episode. This is Season 3, Episode 4 of Ben 10, Merry Christmas. Now, last week's reaction, I uploaded it. I got a comment from someone saying, good luck with next week's episode. It's really weird because if you remember, this show takes place during the summer, and I think there was some reference about Christmas or whatever. I'm like, oh, okay, and then I saw Merry Christmas, I'm like... Oh yeah, this is during the summer. Like this show is taking place during the summer in terms of Ben's summer vacation, essentially. And there's a Merry Christmas title here. So I, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. But I'm excited nonetheless because I'm really enjoying the show. Last episode was really crazy. We had Charm Caster returning, not Charm Master. Like I said, the first time we got introduced to her, Charm Caster showed up and was using some, some sort of weird spell to essentially mind swap with Ben and then ultimately got mind swapped with Gwen and it was really crazy how they handled that or whatever but it was interesting because Gwen at the end of the episode and I pointed this out she had the book of spells the charm caster had in the episode so Gwen has that I don't know what that is referring to I'm not really sure let's get this episode now and check this out and see what they're doing with this episode Merry Christmas I have no idea but I'm excited nonetheless I'm loving the show so much so let's get into now guys let's go We'll stop at the next gas station. How far is that away, though? Oh, he's tinkering with it, okay. Ice Cube City. Oh, no. Do you feel that cold air? He's stepping in snow. What kind of magic is this? Could it be? What? Who? Wait, who's that? Now this is what I call chilling out. Yeah, this is too convenient. Oh, Something's to going on. Machine. You're messing with an old pro. <laughs> oh shit, you're gonna run. <laughs> yeah. Oh, about to say, are they alone? Are those elves? Reindeer around here. Are we gonna see some reindeer now? Right here. Yeah, I'm waiting for the, the shift, the turn, if you will, because this is really weird. <laughs> Of year. They never spend Christmas together? That's interesting. Hmm. Oh crap. Careful with the elves. <laughs> That's not creepy at all. Mr. Jingles? I'm so happy we finally have a chance to meet Mr. Claus. Is it okay if I call you Santa? Oh, he thinks he's Santa. Okay. I created Holiday Village just for you. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh, he's Santa. I mean, it, it fits. It works. I wouldn't eat that. I am not Santa. I'm not Santa. Oh no. Gonna tell them that Santa's here. Wonderful surprise. Thank you so much for bringing those lovely children with you. Yeah. Always use more elves. It's Jingle's guards. You must get Oh, out. okay, that elf's trying to help them. What a heat blast. Don't call it out because you're not gonna get it. Exactly. Don't call it out like that. Oh, shouldn't have done that. I've never accelerated that. Careful. The music. Nice moves. Good job. Ooh. There you go. Wow. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> it's over. Dang it. And if you don't leave now, you will fall under the curse of the village. Grandpa Santa. One of us as well. Well, it looks like I'm not the only one. Uh-oh. Oh, no. <laughs> I know why you look so unhappy. Why? You have nothing to laugh about. Oh my gosh. Here. Mm. But would he actually ho ho ho? What he when he's laughing? I don't know. Frosty the snowman? Who's that? That's Mr. Mr. Jingles. Yeah. And that's you. Oh. When was that taken? 1932, of course. 1932? Look at all those toys. How do we get our 
Holy crap. Are they, all they've just been doing is just building toys? Oh my god. <laughs> I was wondering what he's gonna do. Oh. Rudolph? Oh crap. Oh crap. That cannon. <laughs> it's just candy canes. Wow, cut it in half. <laughs> Of course. Look at that. Oh, God. Hello. No, that's Santa. Okay, that's Santa. So they can start working on toys. But where are the toys even going? Oh, what? Oh, what the hell? The vomit in space. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. That's that's too lucky for him to notice him like that. <laughs> Clumsy bears. I didn't expect it to, to explode. Of course, it's a puzzle. Yeah, it's a puzzle. My, that was too close. Oh. About to say. Oh yeah. It's not working. Of course it's not working. Uh oh. Without my perfect toys, what will Santa do? The Christmas is well, what's going on? giving the perfect toy. Being together is what Christmas is all about. Exactly. Mr. Jingles, look at the yeah. kids you've kept away from their families all exactly. these Christmases. Just this dial to go wherever you want. So they're actually gonna deliver presents. <laughs> Okay. I cannot believe they're actually. But don't they go through the doors? <laughs> they're traveling a lot. Wait, how is he be able to be stink fly the whole time? How? How? Wow. I've been coming here every year since 1932. That's crazy. Oh. Wow. That's him. Mm. So, if we broke the curse, it's the spirit in which it is given. Oh, Why interesting. Oh, okay. They switch it up. I gotta be honest. This was a very bizarre episode, but at the same time, I had a good time with it. So, let's dive into Merry Christmas, this episode. So, the town was cursed. I'm not exactly sure what kind of curse. Maybe they mentioned it at some point. I just didn't hear it or it just didn't click in my head like oh, okay but there was some sort of curse that was lifted of course with them delivering all the presents and then it going back to an actual town instead of being hidden away behind these doors that they luckily just found when of course their rv crashed and everything not crashed well it broke down basically because ben thought it'd be a smart idea to go in there um and try to fix their condition like i almost got it I almost got it. no you don't and they found the doors it's a magical winter wonderland. There's elves, and there's this guy named Mr. Jingles, and he's being all mysterious. I go, there he is. He, he doesn't. He, he's shaven, but I, I think it's him. And he assumes that Max, Grandpa Max, is Santa, which he's not crazy because I think Max could probably dress up as Santa and get away with it, no problem. But Mr. Jingles thought he actually found Santa. Like Santa's here. Like I, I, I he's here now. I have to. I, he has to be here to encourage and push the elves, like the elves that I have, to create the perfect toys and all this. Stuff. And he's stockpiling toys like crazy. And the and the elf that was kind of going off the beaten path, if you will, and actually helping Ben and Gwen, um, he's been there since 1932. That's insane how long the elf has been there and hasn't aged, of course. Uh, and it's it, it, it was kind of strange how Gwen just kind of like, that's you with Mr. Jingles. Like, and when, when was this picture taken? Like, oh, uh, a couple of days ago. But yeah, but what year? Like, what time period? Oh, 1932. But I don't know how she recognized him as the boy. But anyways, um, but they destroy the machine. And then it turns out the town actually existed. And all of a sudden, they basically... They, they basically changed the timeline, essentially. <laughs> like, think about it. This town was completely just gone, right? There was a curse. It's just gone. Because when the RV broke down and they had to pull over, 
there was those doors that they just went through, right? But the town wasn't around at all. Like there was, it, it, it was just these doors. But then when the curse was lifted, the town automatically exists. It just does. It's just there now. And then the elf that they uh, they were working with that, that helped them to get to the actual place where this magic whatever thing that basically is, is causing the curse or causing the town to be the way it is in terms of elves and Mr. Jingles and all this kind of stuff and creating presents and reindeer and snowmen. Those snowman designs are really interesting. It kind of reminded me of the snowman from Curse Cali Dog in terms of the design a little bit in the face. Um, and they had these giant like bears or whatever, like stuffed bears or whatever. And they had all those, uh, the, the nutcrackers with the giant swords. And they had cannons on top of their heads. <laughs> a lot of craziness. But the elf, back to the point that I was getting to, because I was getting sidetracked, because there's a lot of stuff that this episode, there's like, like oh, look at all this Christmas stuff and everything. The elf, with the timeline changed, the elf is now a grandpa. And he has these grandkids, and he doesn't openly say it's him. Obviously, it is him. He kind of winks and walks away like, oh, okay. So they basically fixed the timeline. So the the, the elves that were stuck here, and there was a lot of elves that were stuck in in this uh, Christmas town, whatever. I think they actually had a name for it, but regardless, because uh, I'm forgetting. But now the town is just a Christmas town. Like, I, I, I play, because there, there's... Those, those, there's those kind of places around around the world where you can go to that are like Christmas themed like parks or attractions or whatever and they're open year round basically so out in the middle of the desert out in the middle of nowhere is this random Christmas town of <laughs> Mr. Jingles and they basically just fixed the t- they fixed the timeline it's kind of strange how this show fixed a curse but then it ultimately fixed the timeline because now uh, everything just kind of goes back to normal essentially I was expecting and waiting for it to be revealed some sort of like alien connection. There is no alien connection in this whatsoever. And not not that I could figure out unless that jolly Christmas thing that <laughs> that Ben had to go into as a gray matter was alien was some sort of alien I have no idea. But it was a curse type thing. It, it it was definitely bizarre. Definitely bizarre. But I enjoyed it. I did because I felt that it was an interesting way to implement a Christmas type episode into something that is taking place in the summer in terms of the timeline. And it's crazy to think in terms of the summer vacation angle where they've been, you know, since the beginning of the show, the very beginning of the show, it's been this summer vacation type trip that they, but only Ben, Gwen and Max. No, I don't think they've ever referred to their parents or anything in terms of like calling them or whatever, from what I'm understanding. <laughs> there's not, I don't think there's been any of that, but everything that's kind of unfolded has happened in the span of the summer. So a lot has already occurred so far, and there's still more to go before this show ends. Wow. But no, it was just a curse. Just a curse. And I think Mr. Jingles, he got, I don't think he, he, okay, he's essentially the villain of the episode, but he really didn't come across as that per se. Not not to the extent of what you expect as a villain. Like, he came across as somebody who was overly obsessed with this idea of needing to fulfill, um giving out these toys and everything. And it was really weird how Ben as Stinkfly flying Gwen and Max as Santa still around the world to deliver toys. Yet he didn't turn back to Ben within a certain amount of time because the story warranted for him not to turn back until they landed, but he literally should have turned back into Ben within the, within a a few minutes. He should have, or even less than that. Cause sometimes when the show, he turns into an alien he can't hold the the form for two minutes or so, and then he has to revert back. Like it's pretty quick. Um, so realistically, he should not have been able to fly around the world, even no, no matter how fast they claim they were going. There is no way it would have happened. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I think overall the concept was definitely interesting. But they it, they executed it pretty well. I think that it was uh, fun. It definitely was different. But I think because I've I've said this before a couple of times when the show has done something a little bit different, something strange like this. The show has already proven to be kind of bizarre at times, kind of crazy, so that these kind of storylines are not seen as so out of left field that it feels like this is not even the show anymore. I mean, we literally had, like, last episode, even though she is a magic-based character charm caster, her whole plan was to body swap or mind swap with Ben to use the Omnitrix. Okay, we've already had... 
uh, episodes ago, it was back in season two, where Ben and Kevin were taken upon the ship to basically fight it out in a war world situation, like, you know, manga war, war world, DC, right? They, they, they did kind of a version of that. Um, they have that alternate uh, alternate plane of existence where Ben had Ben was uh, taken in there by um, Kevin and Vilgax. So we've seen some really weird stuff with this show, um, and, and, and of course we had the whole thing too: Ghost Freak leaving the Omnitrix and then going against Ben. Like we've had some weird, crazy stuff. So with and we, we even had that plan episode where uh, what was it? what was his name? Oh, I forget the name of the alien that Ben uh, discovered um, by in that episode with the plants and everything and the fungus and everything and the, the, the mushrooms and shit. I forget what, what, what it is now. I'll, I'll remember it when I'm already done recording. But that episode was really bizarre. So doing something like this, getting to my point, going a, that's a long-winded thing there. Apologies. But you understand what I'm saying. The show has already established how weird it can get at times and craziness and how they're not afraid to go outside of the box they basically set Ben 10 in. Um, of course, we had that flash forward with the Ben 10,000. So this is not too crazy. I, it's still kind of bizarre with this whole cursed town and everything, but they, they made it work, okay? It was fun for Ben and Gwen, Max for a little bit, and then he got turned into Santa, but at least they had, you know, they, they told a pretty solid story with it. I'll give them that, and I think it was nice that they uh, re uh, released a curse on the town, and now it's just a random Christmas town that's there out in the middle of the desert. <laughs> out in the middle of nowhere basically so yeah overall good stuff so what you guys think of the episode i'm curious to know your thoughts about C merry christmas and uh, let me know in the comments below i'm curious to know what you thought about it and uh yeah i will talk to you guys soon peace out